I'm stand-up comedian Anna Clifford and I'm going on an epic Irish pub crawl. I'm going to journey around the country to visit some of Ireland's most unique, interesting, picturesque and beautiful pubs. This is Ireland's Perfect Pubs. Today I'm in the beautiful medieval town of Fettered in County Tipperary to visit a truly deadly pub. McCarthy's. Pub? Sure. Restaurant? Fair enough. But wait for it. Undertakers? That can't be right. Established in the 1840s, it remains largely unchanged. Their tagline is, they'll wine you, dine you, and bury you, which is also my opening line on the dating apps. Believe it or not, they are said to have regulars from the other side, with multiple ghost sightings reported in the bar. See, even the spirit world revolves around the local pub. There's only one person I thought brave enough to join me on this mysterious leg of my pub crawl, and that is fellow stand-up comedian, Simon Hennessy. Simon, how are you getting on? I'm a little scared. As you should be. Boo! <sighs> how are you with ghosts and funeral homes? Well, Anna, I'm pretty used to being ghosted. You know, colleagues, yeah. friends, family. It's fine, I'm used to it. Uh, so, pretty good. Well, I've organised a little activity for us first to work up a bit of a thirst. And keeping in the theme of all things spooky, I thought that we could go down the road and then deep down under that road to the Mitchelstown Caves. Please don't murder me, though. What height are you? So you're sizing up my coffin already, huh? I'm six foot four, six foot five, majestically tall, basically. They might need to crouch down for this one. Look at us, two naturally blonde comedians matching. If you want to swap that coat for my far less impressive one at any point, just let me know. Only half an hour down the road is the truly breathtaking Mitchelltown Caves, one of the largest and most complex cave systems in the country. If you mean emotionally complex, Anna, I'm not going there with you again. You must be happy. That's me. I want to know, how deep down are we going into these caves? Today we'll be going down 90 metres, with the total length being three kilometres. Simon here, he is quite tall. Is there a chance he might get trapped? I can't make any promises. Follow me in now, guys, into the cave. It's a bit tight. I feel real nervous all of a sudden. I genuinely am way too tall for this. I think I'm getting more confident with this now. She says as she clutches the walls. <laughs> So this cave was found back in 1833 by a local farmer in the area. So he was quarrying for limestone when his crowbar slipped through a crevice. He then removed a few boulders and that's how he found Mitch's Town Cave. Now it's 350 million years old. It's looking good for its age. So this is what we call our stage up here. We've had lots of different acts perform, such as the Coronas, uh, Gavin James, Sigrid. Have you ever had a stand-up comedy gig? I don't think so. Hmm. How are all my cavemen and women doing tonight? <sighs> These caves are class. And I think the only thing that's missing is like a little bar here at the side, or is it illegal to sell alcohol to minors? Boo! Send up the other guy. All right, Mitchell's Town Caves, how we doing? You know, they asked me if I wanted to do a stand-up set in the cave, and I said, I don't know, I style like might. It's his first gig. Pillar? I hardly know her. Thanks, guys. Cave Mila Falcha and Cave a good evening. Cave a good evening. Ca Goodbye. Ah. Abby, thanks so much. That was brilliant. No problem. You know yeah, that's great. Yeah, I am. Yeah. I think we've earned ourselves a drink. Dead right. Let's go. Right, here we are. McCarthy's Pub and Undertaker. How are you around death in general? Anna, I think you need to work on your small talk a little. Get in there. <laughs> Jasper, how are you getting on? I'm good, how are you? I hear you're the man who does it all around here. You keep feathered, fed and watered, and you even give them a good send-off. Yes, I do. How does a pub become an undertaker's? Well, this pub has been an undertaker's for nearly 200 years. You're having me on. Do you want proof? I do. Yeah, follow me. Come on. Yes. Right, we're behind the pub, and welcome to the hearse house. Now, do you still think I'm having you on? I'm a bit scared. Come on. <laughs> right. OK. All right. I should never have doubted you. <laughs> This is the real deal. So how did the pub become an undertaker's? My great-great-grandfather opened up the business in 
1840. Through law, the old English laws, if somebody died in the street, they had to be taken into the nearest public house. You have to wait there until the guards arrive or an undertaker comes to take them away. In our case, we also had horses. So yeah. We had a horse trap, so we had the vehicle to take them away. What is more difficult, being a barman or an undertaker? Being a barman. Really? Much more difficult. Having to deal with living people. Exactly. The fellas in the back of that don't say a word they to you. They don't talk back to you. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> so, will we go for a drink? I'd love that. Come on. Oh, Jasper, good man. Thanks, Emil. No Thank you, Jasper. Yeah. All set. Slant, yeah. Cheers. What do you think of the day so far? A little spooky. A little tough on someone of my height, too, but otherwise very enjoyable. Do you think this place is really haunted? I didn't want to say it. <laughs> Stop doing that, OK? Enough is enough. Why do you think the pub is so important to Irish culture? Because the weather is too bad to do anything else. Totally fair. That's reason number one. But beyond that, you know, Irish people are natural storytellers. And there's no better place to gather and tell a story than in a pub. We love to tell the same story mm -hmm. over and over again. That's why, you know, when you just, some towns you come to, and there's literally like, only has like five pubs on the road. It's because you have to tell the same story yeah. again and again and again. I love as well how you start by saying there's only five pubs. There'll only be like one place to buy food, but there'll be at least five pubs. Yeah. yeah. One of my favorite skits, I guess, of yours is the Irish traditional drinking songs that you do. And mm -hmm. um, what was the inspiration behind that? Was it just from watching it all loud down the pub? It's kind of it ties in a bit to the pub here because some of the lines are very consistent with some of the themes here, because yeah. obviously pub, the, the first one is, you know, well, how did I lose my job? Drinking at the pub. How did I end up in the clink? Had too much to drink. Which is obviously tying in with yeah. the pub. But then the next line, my wife and daughter perished, diseased and malnourished. Oh. Pour me, pour me, pour me another drink. Hey. You get a lot of yeah. like, let's all have a drink. And like, my whole family is dead, this pub, funeral home slash pub. It's sort of the physical manifestation of that. an Irish trad song. Yeah. Is telling stories down the pub where you think you learned to be funny, or was it like more in school, or? Probably was a bit of a class clan in mm. school. I was very bad at sitting still. You know, I was gonna be annoying and distract people, so I kind of had to be funny to justify that. So that's probably where it all began, but it was definitely honed in the pub. here than in the pub in the caves? It is. Simon, we've had a truly bizarre day, but we I've have. had loads of fun. Me too. Good. I'm really sorry for nearly killing you in the caves and scaring the life out of you in a haunted pub. Look, Boom. I forgive you. It's fine. And while it's sad that we're leaving, I'm glad that we get to walk out and not have to be carried out by Jasper. You're right. Blessed. We are. See you never. Safe home. Anna, you still owe me for that pint. So, Anna, Anna. <laughs> <laughs>